Page 5, Dancing Raindrops. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with my videos and all that. I, I assume you are that you've been, so you sort of know my approach and my style of doing it. But just briefly, I have a particular set of steps I go through when learning a new piece of music. And that set of steps is what I use in these videos to learn these pieces. So, even though things may seem a little weird at first, we'll straighten them out eventually. And when I get a new piece of music, first thing I do is I look it over, just get an idea of it. And this thing I see is three lines long, treble and bass clef. It's got one flat in the key signature. We're in the key of F major. It means all the Bs in the piece, no matter where they are, are automatically going to be B flats. And then three, four time signature. I assume you know what the time signature is and how it works by now. Otherwise, you really shouldn't be in this book. I want to take it one hand at a time and make sure I understand what each hand is doing. And then I'll try and put the hands together. And at first, I connect everything. I just, I'm just interested in notes and fingering and rhythm. So the right hand, we're starting third finger on A. And that puts us in this position. Don't forget the B flat. It's in the key signature. And they're eighth notes, one and two and. One and two and three and. Get the idea? Second line, second measure. You got B natural, see the natural sign? Remember the rules for the, nat for the accidentals. It's good from that point on for the rest of the measure. So that B natural, the natural sign, is good for the rest of the measure, which means both of those Bs are natural. And then next measure, they give you a B flat. You don't need the B flat. It's a B flat anyway, because the natural sign in the other measure is only good for that measure. But they're being nice. It helps. It's called a courtesy sign. It doesn't hurt anything. It's clear. Make sure it's a B flat then in the third measure. Right here. Left hand, well, left hand's got broken chords mainly. You're here. You don't need any other finger numbers. Actually, in, in this piece, the only finger numbers you need in each hand is at the beginning. You don't need any other finger numbers. Please don't be reading finger numbers. Read the notes. So here, it's here, and then just quarter notes. Third measure, you got to come down one. Okay. Second line, second measure, you get the B natural again. Okay. Last two measures at the bottom, it's here, here, and then together. And that's a little bit of a trick here to go from one note to two notes. See, I use weight to push the notes down. I don't use the fingers and trying to do it with those. I use weight and I simply lower which finger I want the weight to be on. So then that last the last two notes for the left hand, the, the quarter note and the dotted half note. My weight is on here and I'm going to put the weight on the other fingers. I'm just I'm gonna just roll it over, just transfer the weight from one here to here. The kicker is get the notes down at the same time. I don't, but maybe you can. It's good skill to have. Then I try to put the hands together and see what happens. We're over here. That's a one. See, you're just, you can hesitate all you need to. It's not important. What is important is the hands, the fingers, which fingers are working together on the hands and what. Then you can go back through it a few hundred times or whatever and get rid of the hesitation. So it's a steady beat. Keep it slow, but a steady beat. And then once I have the rhythm and the notes and all working pretty well, doesn't have to be perfect, but pretty well, then I'll add in the articulation. Now here it's the staccatos and slurs. This is a lesson on wrist staccato. And depending on what country you're from, some countries call this hand staccato because you're flexing at the wrist, but the hand is doing the work. That, like so. Yeah, high. That, okay. And that's what we're doing here. We're on here, and I'm, I'm just... And bump, bump. And this isn't real big here. This is just a little bit... Just now, if I have time, I'll always be on the key, and I'll, I'll just push the key down and bounce off. 
boom, boom. I'll put it back on the key before I play the next one. If I don't have time, then I gotta do that, but I keep it a small motion. Here, I could bounce this, but this I can put, I got time to put it on the key every time. Can you do both at the same time? the third, second line third major, that's slurred, and then lift up. Back to that. I want you to have an idea of the articulation, the staccatos and all, and then we'll think about the dynamics. MP is mezzo piano, which means moderately or medium soft, sort of soft, and the dynamic applies to the melody, which in this case is the right hand. So we want the right hand to be moderately soft, Whatever you think moderately soft, sort of soft, I don't just, it, it, It's a range, it's not a set value. It depends on your situation. You decide what's moderately soft here and keep this very soft. We want to hear the melody. Don't play them the same. No, please don't do that. Ugh. Now when you get the second line, second measure, they put in a swell. A swell, you see the matching hairpins? It's where you go up and back down. You swell up and come back down. It doesn't tell you how loud to get. I'm going to suggest you go up to about a moderately loud. Just go up a little bit. So in the second, and this is for the melody here. Here, that's your dark, because when I get these hairpins like this, I look in the middle of the hairpin, and I see what note or notes are there, and that's my target. That's what I'm headed for. Here, it's the half note. And then come back down, and now back, back down where you were. The left hand stays in the background. You get a swell again at the last three measures. Here. Here. Those three notes are in the middle of it, about a moderately loud. And then come back down. Left hand's just in the background, keep it out of the way. Then the speed, allegretto is between marato and allegro. I call it the fun speed. When I see a piece in allegretto, I think, okay, we're gonna, this is a nice piece. I like, I like allegrettos. Now keep in mind, the tempo is the overall feel of the piece. It's not necessarily the speed of the beat. So what is this? The, the eighth notes will want to slow it down, and the quarter notes will want to speed it up, and you've got to find somewhere. It's, if I do it moderato in the middle, to me that's moderato. If I do it allegro, which is fast, So allegretto is somewhere in the middle, somewhere. Good luck finding it. Just, just, it's just a fun piece. Next, poco means a little, retardando, rent for retardando, slow down a little, not a lot. But see, if they didn't have the poco there, it was just a retardando, there it needs to slow down. But a poco, just slow down a little bit, don't get carried away. With it. And it's a felt thing. How much to slow down? I don't know, a little bit. Let's play this together slowly to double check the notes and the rhythms. I'm not going to do the dynamics. I'm going to do both hands about the same. We're just checking notes and rhythms to make sure you have those right. Because if you play a wrong note, nobody's around to tell you how do you know. I'll give us three counts. One and ready and go and.
two. Three.